The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. We're back. Good day, everybody. We're here in Las Vegas at EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. The, the Cube started at EMC World 2010 in Boston. And it's our pleasure to have David Fratura and Sean Wiedich here. David is with the office of the CTO at EMC. Sean is a CUBE alum. Uh, he's the CTO of the global enter enterprise solutions business at Rackspace, uh, obviously a company who's doing great things in the cloud. Gentlemen, welcome back. Good to see Thanks. you. Thanks, thank you. Good so Sean, you and I talked last year at this event, at the EMC uh, uh, partner event, uh, the, cloud, the, the service provider partners event. So, What's happened you know, since then? What's evolved, what's changed, what's come into focus, and what's still fuzzy? Yeah, no, great question, Dave. So well, first off, glad to be back. You know, the last year has been just incredible in terms of um, adoption by our customers, our public cloud and our hybrid models, um, leveraging the, the broad components of our portfolio, be it the public cloud, be it dedicated, be it dedicated OpenStack. So we're finding customers are starting to realize that you know, public cloud is not for everything. You know, we've, we've been hearing from, from our competitors saying, you know, it's all about a commodity, all about a race, to the, to the cheapest, but our customers come back to us going, we need that flexibility that, that a hybrid solution offers. We need the ability to mix and match public resources with, with EMC and the, and the dedicated portfolio. So it's been a really uh, fast moving year, certainly with the, all the changes and, and iterations occurring within OpenStack and the, the maturation that's occurred there. So you know, we are solving customer problems across all those platforms every day. So it's interesting to have two CTOs on. Uh, now, of course, CTO these days, the sales guys love to drag you around and put you in front of customers and push a button and say go, so I can close some business. But there's some things that happen behind the scenes. Um, so I wonder, David, if you could talk about, um, from, from your standpoint, uh, the relationship with Rackspace. How, how, did it, how has it evolved? How did it start? How does it evolve? And what are the objectives? Well, um, you know, it's a great relationship we have with Rackspace. Um, and we look at how EMC and our technology can help to enable uh, the industry. And we look for partners that most certainly are um, leading innovators, and you know, with Rackspace, we have a partner that also recognizes that the needs of our customers are going to range from you know enterprise-grade capabilities all the way through next-generation systems. So we don't necessarily believe that a model has to um, evolve strictly down the path of you know very commodity compute. We believe that we need to bring our customers or enable our customers to leverage partners that will be able to scale the range of services that will meet their IT needs today and tomorrow. And so when EMC looked for partners in our service provider program, Rackspace was one of the first ones that came, you know, it was very obvious that we needed a partner like them to, you know, bring, you know, to our customers. And so, you know, that's how it evolved, which is really, we recognize early on that it's not just a race to the bottom in terms of commodity compute and storage, but it's a need for a market transition, and so we look at Rackspace as really that key enabler for us and our partners as they look at cloud services. Yeah, and I want to circle back to that whole race to zero thing and get your guys' opinion on that. Before we do, um, Sean, I want to talk about um, your heritage. So why do people buy from Rackspace historically, and, and is, that, is that changing? Uh, you know, you've got infrastructure, maybe it's on premise, they want it, to be in a more secure facility, in a more professionally run facility. Is, is that the impetus? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and how it's evolved. Yeah, no, happy to. There are a lot of secure facilities. You know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when we started this organization, it was very difficult to, to get co-location space or provisioned infrastructure very quickly. Um, it was a very painful, difficult process that we simplified for customers. Mm -hmm. What we've seen is that we very quickly evolved and realized the real value is in providing a support experience, that, that deep expertise that customers require. So 10 years ago it was, you know, it was more around how do I set up virtualization for my customers. Now it's, be, then it, prior to that it was operating systems. Now it's starting to become how does Rackspace help enable me to go deeper in very specific technologies. Things like big data solutions, things like mobile, things like DevOps and the, the DevOps ecosystem so the customers are still coming to us because of the value that our fanatical support experience brings but the, the fanatical support experience is evolving and changing to be able to keep up with the challenges in the industry and the relationship with EMC is with EMC I call it classic or right? EMC I, I, I always get confused but you know the core EMC right the the, the host of this show it's not 
uh, necessarily a comprehensive relationship with uh, the Federation. You have a relationship with VMware. I don't know if you do anything with Pivotal, but can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we've got uh, relationships across all three, but it is our, our deepest relationship at this point is with EMC. We do have, we may not talk about it much, but we do manage 35,000 plus VMs on VMware. However, our EMC footprint is massive for our customers. You know, we're using um, VNX, we're using VMAX, we're using Isilon, because customers value the performance, the consistency, and the scalability that those solutions bring, particularly when used in conjunction with some of the versatile platforms like our public cloud infrastructure. So EMC has been a, a long-standing partner of ours. Love coming here every year, talking about it, and showcasing our mutual successes. So let's talk a little bit about, um, and David, I'll start with you. The, the public cloud, you know, which is sort of a euphemism for, for AWS. I mean, it's the leader in public cloud. It's growing very rapidly, making an impact. Um, but, but you guys are, are solving a different problem. Uh, I wonder if you could talk about how you approach uh, cloud relative to, let's say, public cloud. What's different today? Well, I mean, just to begin with, I don't necessarily think there's anything inherently wrong in saying I look at a certain type of cloud for a certain kind of workload. One of the key themes you'll see at EMC is we recognize as we look at the needs of our customers, they really scan, you know, span the gamut of lots of needs um, from traditional enterprise to building a next generation systems. And what we recognized early on is you know, this view that I can run to a particular type of architectural model as the foundation of what I do in you know, this next generation of you know, IT technology usage um, will only satisfy a small portion of what our customers need. If you look at the majority of the people you'll see here is yes, they have a cloud strategy, but the reality is they have to live in the confines of the systems and the technologies they deploy today. And that creates a special problem because you just can't take traditional architectures, transaction-oriented architectures, and drop them on a next generation platform. So when we think about cloud, we believe it has to be uh, a range of capabilities. And in that regard, we believe that IT organizations, large corporations, Fortune 1000, government organizations are going to need a, a range of services. So we think that if we look across the EMC portfolios, you'll see a range of capabilities. You heard VMAX, uh, VNX, Isilon. It ranges from traditional high performance block storage all the way through scale out NAS. Um, the footprint is there for us to take the you know, technology forward into the cloud. And importantly, it's not just going to be a journey of what kind of architectures you have in the cloud, but it's how we're going to bring technology into the cloud. So hybrid is a core fundamental piece for us. So it's not just, I have a low cost cloud out there. In AWS, they've done great stuff. They've pretty much driven that industry. Um, but we recognize that we're going to have to service, you know, service, we're going to have to service a range of needs. And importantly, we're going to have to find mechanisms and means to bring that technology to our partners that also fits in the business paradigm that our customers live in today. It just can't change overnight. Hi, right, Sean, I want to get your perspective on this, because it seems like AWS really doesn't have a, a, an aggressive on-premise strategy. I'm, I'm understanding that they don't use the term hybrid. That's not in their vocabulary. It's, it's certainly in a lot of your customers' vocabulary. Um, and so, is that primarily the difference? I feel like the you know, early days of cloud were okay, tire kicking, a lot, of, a lot of dev, and then into the downturn, reduced CapEx, coming out of it, a lot of shadow IT, and now it's mainstream, cloud, everybody accepts cloud, uh, but you guys have a different philosophy than the public cloud su supplier, so I wonder if you could give us your angle on that. Yeah, no, uh, so the way we look at that is when you only have one cloud product, that's, that's your cloud, and, and with Rackspace we have multiple products and we have the ability to be able to mix and match those for our customers. You know, a lot of our customers are coming out of either the enterprise space, want to try the cloud, EMC is a familiar constraint, or a familiar name, brand, they, can, they know they can, uh, the capabilities, they can rely on it. Other customers are coming out of the cloud space, born of the cloud, started off on these other platforms, and have reached constraints in there, particularly around uh, the ability to scale on it from, for, for, from a performance perspective, or from a cost of storage perspective. And so, some of these large, some of our largest customers' are, wins are coming from cloud competitors where they are unable because they have a single platform to be able to accommodate their growth needs, their performance expectations. So, you know, the, the combination of the support experience we provide, but the ability to customize and leverage the various platforms is really the strength of our offering these days. I want to come back to this notion of, of, of a race to zero, race to the bottom. Uh, when Google cut prices recently, the, you know, the, the, you know created a, a spate of, of articles in the media about how this is a race to zero, race to bottom. Do you feel as though that's the case for the public cloud only and not for the hybrid cloud? Or do you feel like 
all cloud is not a race to zero, or all cloud is a race to zero. Uh, help us squint through that. Now, mess. So all clouds are not created equally, right? So it's, it's a combination of platform, services, expertise, technology. And so Rackspace's cloud differentiation is, we run an open, open stack. So it's an open platform, open APIs, following very closely the open stack community. Now our latest, our current version of cloud is very close to the Ice House release, and we continue to iterate and add fake functionality based upon open stack. The second piece of that is, while, there's, while the infrastructure is getting commoditized on the cloud pl platforms, the expertise to be able to assist customers is where the value proposition lies. You know, Google and Amazon are going to go head to head and, and they will continue to push prices down. But Rackspace is in a different niche and always has been, where, such as when we competed with co-location years ago, that continues to get cheaper, continues to get more commoditized, but the service layer, that experience we're able to bring to the customer will continue to allow us to differentiate. Customers are coming to us today and asking us, how can Rackspace help me introduce a DevOps methodology so that I become more agile? How can Rackspace help me manage these new applications, platforms that provide more value to me, but expertise is difficult to come by? That is where our value proposition is, and it just happens to ride on a, uh, on a, a cloud-based infrastructure. And so the, uh, the let's, let's talk about OpenStack from, from EMC's perspective, because you, you got a partnership with VMware, Sean. Um, you know, EMC owns 80% of, of VMware. Uh, you're dipping your toe into OpenStack. You're not, certainly not running away from it, nor is VMware. It's contributed the NICERA code to OpenStack. So, what's your take on, on, on what Sean just said? Well, I, I mean, I think, you know, the key point from an EMC point of view is our customers could have diverse needs. And there are different technologies out there that offer different value uh, and different capabilities. And so from an EMC point of view, we, we obviously do have a vested interest in the success of VMware, but we also have a vested interest in the success of the, our customers and also the industry as a whole. And you know, OpenStack is, a, is definitely a significant um, technology and actually even more technology and ecosystem out there. And EMC is committed to being a part of that. So you'll see um, almost everything we do, at, uh, you'll hear at EMC World today and this week is that we have this view about openness and that's a key thing for us. So the technology that we're deploying in Rackspace today itself is fully capable of integrating into an OpenStack environment. And that's a key, key philosophy for us up and down the company is openness. And, and by the way, you're seeing that in VMware, you know, not just NYSERA, but also even in VMware's integration of their stack inside of OpenStack. So we believe in open ecosystems, and we do think that it's healthy for the industry to have a, you know, a number of different technologies driving new innovations for the community overall. Yeah, and we have Pat Gelsinger on uh, later this week, so we'll get, obviously get, get his take on it. Sean, you mentioned DevOps. I wonder if we could talk about the DevOps culture a little bit. Um, how is that evolving? Why is it so important? And will that, is that hitting sort of mainstream IT? Yeah, it's starting to. I'd say we're in mainstream IT, it's still, people are still trying to figure it out, still trying to determine. What they see are the benefits. They see the benefits of having your operational teams and your development teams working closely together. Faster time to market, more frequent releases that are easier to troubleshoot. Um, but along with that comes an expertise, a, a need to have a working knowledge of a set of tools to do automated deployment, to do automated testing, to get better insight and visibility into their applications. So our very cloud-centric customers already get it. The, the small startup shop they integrate that from day one. The enterprises are coming to Rackspace and saying, Rackspace, you've already integrated this into your organization, into your operations, into how OpenStack is deployed. How can you help us to be able to navigate, not just managing the applications, but a layer of expertise to be able to, to that we can take learnings from how Rackspace has implemented DevOps and bring those into our organization so that we can see an example of the benefits that have occurred, but the roadmap and the path to be able to get there. So it is absolutely a critical piece of, of what our customers are asking us to provide um, in, in terms of a service offering and, and a support capability. Now how do you guys reach out to developers? Is it? I mean, you've, you've all got your, you probably got your own efforts, EMC has its efforts to you. Does the partnership have any specific, uh, you know, developer outreach efforts, or is that something that you could see in the future? So I'd say right now the, 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 the biggest outreach efforts are, are going to be um, focused around OpenStack. So, you know, Rackspace and EMC are going to be at OpenStack next week, so it's going to be a great show. You will be there too. To grow. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> never, miss, never miss the plug. Um, so that is the, the main emphasis for how we reach out and, and connect our developer communities. You know, over time as the software, as, as the storage and the infrastructure becomes more software defined, I can see that the need to go and, and develop better um, go-to-market activities to be able to cater to those needs. But right now it's predominantly on the, on the OpenStack side. I I think just, just from the, the health of this activity to begin with, I mean, it's important that we have open collaboration and probably the strong, strongest thing we can do together is actually drive OpenStack as a whole and in the industry um, to accelerate its acceptance. And you know, this is you know, absolutely important to us 
So we look at it as you know, a key uh, partnership activity with, with Rackspace, which is to help this ecosystem take off. Excellent. As Sean said, OpenStack next week. It's in Atlanta. We will be there with theCUBE, broadcasting keynotes and broadcasting guests, and uh, hope to see you guys down there. Excellent. All right, Before thanks very much, gentlemen. Okay. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're live. This is theCUBE from EMC World 2014. We'll be right back. <laughs>